Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope your day's going really well. I'm in Luminar 4 today, and I'm having a lot of fun because I'm playing with a photo that I took uh, in Dublin a number of years ago, back when I shot an icon. So this was geez, six, seven years ago, maybe? I don't know. But we were uh, walking around in Dublin and waiting for the rain to pass. And so, you know, we sat in a pub. I mean, it was Dublin. Like, you're almost required to do that. Um, but that's one of the things about storms. Like, you can be in an in a awesome place like Dublin, dying to get out and shoot. And if it rains, it rains, and you can't control it. But sometimes the rain will break, and uh, the clouds are still there, and they're beautiful, and then the light will come through, and it's gorgeous. And that's what happened with this photo. So here's my base photo. Uh, this was over the River Liffey, shot, as I said, with my Nikon, and I was using the wide-angle lens, so I got, like, tree and stuff in here that I'm going to get rid of. But after a little bit of fun in Luminar, I turned it into that, which is much more vibrant, colorful. It's kind of stuff I like to do in Luminar, honestly, and I, I just love the color fun that you can have. So that's what I'm going to turn this photo into. I'm going to start with the crop tool, which is, of course, a 16 by 9 crop. I'm going to drag that there to the top, and I'm going to do a little straightening as well. And I think that looks about straight, and I'm going to say done. Uh, and then I really pretty much always start in the light um, tool here on the Essentials tab. So I'm going to pull the temperature to the left, which is something I do on, gosh, about every photo. And I'm going to take the temperature, uh, excuse me, the tint to the right, which is something else I do on just about every photo. And in fact, I did a video about white balance, which is basically what I'm adjusting. If you want to check out that video, I, I put a link up there. Um, I'm taking the exposure down a little bit as well. It's a little bit too dark. So um, I'm going to do something about like that. And I got some notes over here I'm going to have to refer to every now and then so that I can remember what I did. Um, that's a little bit dark, it seems, but... That's okay, I'm, I'm just kind of managing the light, and this will look better here in a minute. Let me see what I did on highlights. Okay, so something about like that, and then it brought shadows up quite a bit. So um, just that change alone, as you can see, significantly altered the photo, and in fact, there's the before and after. As you can see, we balanced out the light a little bit, but we still got some more to do, so I'm gonna do that here in AI Enhance using both of these sliders. The first one's AI Accent, and I'm gonna go about 26 there, which I think does a great job of brightening that foreground, and then the Sky Enhancer is going to do a great job of sort of taming that sky for me. So I'm going to go about 38. And I think if you just look at the before and after of that filter, there's the before and the after. It's almost like I, I flipped like the before, still a little bit dark in the foreground, a little too bright, I think, in the sky. And the after, much more evenly balanced. So I, I use the AI accent a lot. It is kind of the easy button, as I say many times. But Sky Enhancer is also just fabulous. Okay, and now onto AI structure. And I'm gonna do my favorite thing here, which is go negative with the structure and then paint it in to the sky and the um, water because all I'm trying to do is just uh, remove detail, just smooth it out. In some ways, I'm trying to make it look like a long exposure. But this was actually a single frame from a set of brackets. So it's definitely not a long exposure, but you know, hey, we're friends here and I'm just kind of making it look the way I want it to look. So now I'm painting that into the sky and I'm going to do a sloppy job around these edges because I'm in a hurry. Uh, and I don't even care about that tree in the upper left because I'm going to remove it here in a minute. Uh, now I need to come down here and get some of this soft goodness uh, painted into the water. So let me do that. And uh, let's see. i got to be getting close. I'm sure I missed some spots. So I always go click the eye and uh, see all the spots that I missed, which are usually quite a few. So let me hit those and get this thing kind of fixed up and I missed some over here and I think that's fine for now so I'm going to turn that off and say done and I think I'm good with AI structure. Now one of the other things I love to do obviously in addition to amplifying or, or um, a way that I like to amplify the colors is in the color uh, slider you have saturation and vibrance. I tend to err on the side of using vibrance a lot more often than saturation simply because it helps some of the non-dominant colors get a little bit of kick whereas saturation is just kind of um, I think of it as more global, like every color gets increased, whereas vibrance is more like the non-dominant. So I think it has a, a more gentle, more subtle effect on the overall color look in a photo. That's why I, I like to use that one. Uh, and then I also come down here to Landscape Enhancer. And it is golden hour. You can see the sun is setting out of frame to the left, and that golden light is kind of shining on that uh, the uh, building here in Dublin. I think it's called the Four Quartz. 
Uh, so I'm gonna use golden hour to accentuate that. I'm gonna pull that up to like 25 or something. And it just does a nice job. It warms up the whole photo, but because the building was already getting some of that warm light, it's really, I think, starting to make it pop. As well as that tree, I think, is showing up really nice. So just overall, I think it has just a nice impact on the photo. Here's the before, a little bit tamer, a little bit softer, and after. A little bit more warmth, a little bit more kick, and I think it's a little bit more noticeable. Okay, now I'm gonna hop over here to the Creative tab, and I'm gonna get a little mystical, and I'm gonna go to about 29 or 30, something about like that. Uh, and let me show you that before, there it is, and after. Now it does darken the frame just a little bit, but it, it's to me it's like that romantic shadow kind of thing, so I don't really have any issue with that. And let me check my notes here. Um, I did increase the saturation on that to like 15 or 20, something like that, and I took the warmth down about negative 30. Just to, again, just a subtle kind of implementation of mystical. There's before and there's after. I like it. Adds a little bit of shadow, a little bit of drama, a little bit of romance. It just kind of, I don't know, sexes it up a little bit, I guess. Bad thing to say. Okay, and then I'm gonna pop over here to the Pro tab and get split toning. Did a video about split toning recently as well. You can check it out there. Super powerful, amazing adjustment. It's it's a filter that I'm just a huge fan of, and I've I've talked about it in a lot of videos. But if you're new new here, check out the split toning video. But um, become friends with it. I think you'll be happy that you did. Okay, so first thing is get the highlights hue kind of set. So I'm gonna do like a 21 and the saturation. I'm gonna go to like the mid 40s, right? So maybe 44. You can see this really bringing up the color. And you can see also that this is what helped me get to that final look. Even though I didn't even bring saturation up at all on the uh, color slider, I just did some vibrance. I'm starting to get some nice saturated colors here because of what I'm doing in split toning. Now over here for shadows, I'm actually gonna go a little bit blue. So something about like that. And I'm gonna give a little bit of saturation to those as well. The other thing that I like about this photo is you've got that interplay of warm and cool. Cool water, cool sky, but warm center of the photo, which, you know, they're basically like the warm and cold, they play off of each other. It's very complimentary, I think. So I think it helps uh, accentuate the look of the photo. And I'm gonna take the balance a little bit this way. Um, I don't use the balance a lot, but um, I don't know, I just, for whatever reason here, here's the before split toning, and there's after. Not a massive difference, but I think you can notice it. And uh, in my opinion, it's, it's a help to the photo. Okay, now I need to go get the eraser, and I'm gonna say erase, and I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna get rid of these trees. Okay, so first thing is, I just get a little bit bigger brush, and then I hit erase after I paint over, and I usually paint off the bigger things. I paint them off kind of in sections, like I don't wanna try to get it all at once. I feel like sometimes that uh, doesn't work quite as well. So like I said, I'll just kind of do these in sections and just kind of paint over that and hit erase. And generally, I think it does a good job. Okay, I think that's looking good. And I believe I had a few spots. I need to come over here. But there were a few spots in the sky. I can still see a couple of them. But, oh gosh, now I can't tell if those are spots on my screen or actually in the photo. But um, let's, just, let's just say I got them. I'm going to go back to fit to screen. And I'm going to say finished. So I've done the eraser and I've done those base filters. And at this point, I kind of want to bring up a little bit of the detail in that building. And so um, I'll often save eraser and things like that that I just did for the end of my edit, unless it's really glaringly just really getting in the way and driving me nuts, in which case I'll go do that first. But I tend to save that for later in editing. I'm not really sure why. Uh, but in this case, um, after having done that, I, I looked at the photo and thought, you know, I kind of want to bring some detail up. So I'm going to go get small details, take that to about a 10, medium details to about a 20. And I think that really gives a nice pop on the building. And then I'm gonna go over here to mask and brush. And I'm just gonna brush it in, uh, paint it in where I want it, which is on the building. Um, all I'm trying to do is create a little bit more crispiness in the center of the photo. And especially I think that will be uh, visible and uh, kind of stand out um, because I smoothed the sky and the water so much. So let me see how this is looking. Something about like that. Um, I always miss a bit, um, and you know, to be honest, you don't have to be exact. This is not science. Um, it's not a science experiment. This is not a recipe. Uh, you know, you're not cooking something in the kitchen. You kind of do it as, uh, you know, to, uh, what do they say, season to taste, right? In this case, I just wanted to give it a little bit of bump, but I think it looks better. 
and I'm just about where I want to be, except I still want to do a little bit more. And one thing I, I really like just doing on photos, especially when they're a little bit dramatic like this and you have something kind of in the center is, of course, the vignette. But you know what? I actually thought of something I'm going to do before that, and that is advanced contrast. And I may come back and do a video on advanced contrast. There's not really any particular um, thing that I do every time. And, every, you know, obviously every photo is different. I just tend to drag the sliders around until I get to something that I like. So it's really, um, I hate to say, like, I'm bumbling around in the dark, but I kind of am often with the tool simply because um, I, I don't know what it's going to do necessarily. It's not like golden hour where you slide it and you're like, okay, things are going to get warm. Um, advanced contrast, because it separates it by highlights, midtones, and shadows, every photo is going to look a little bit different. So in other words, experiment with it. So in my experimentation, I found that I went to uh, about the mid-50s in highlights, um, uh, like maybe mid-30s in the mid-tones, and shadows, something lower, maybe like about a 15. Um, let me show you the before and after. There's the before, and there's the after. Um, you notice that it impacted the, the brightness level in the sky because I'm impacting contrast. And also, if you notice, the colors got a little bit punchier, right? So there's the before, and there's the after. Colors pop a little bit, and that's one of the things to be aware of with uh, when you're using contrast. Both smart contrast, but especially advanced contrast, is you can impact your colors, so just be careful. You might sometimes make these adjustments and then go back and say, ooh, I need to take the oranges down or something. I actually like them like this because it is a golden hour shot, and I'm not just saturating for the sake of saturation, but I'm accentuating that golden hour look, and the light was hitting the building. So I'm just bringing it up and making it a bit more prominent, but something to be aware of when you're using advanced contrast. Okay, now I'm gonna go back and get the vignette. Okay, so I'm gonna go like negative 59 and size like 22 or something like that. Uh, it's fairly tight. I also wanna change the roundness. Um, so if you go to the right, it becomes more round, like a circle, but if you go to the left, it becomes more, uh, not rectangular, but it gets you know more rectangular or oval in shape. Uh, and especially when you have something that's cropped like this, like I wouldn't want a circle vignette on what's basically a really harsh rectangle shaped photo. To me, it doesn't go together. So I want the vignette shape to somewhat mirror the shape of the photo. Now, at the same time, like um, all photos are, you know, sharp edge, if you will. Um, however, a one-to-one -one crop, right, a square crop, um, a circular vignette might work really well on that. So every photo is different, but this is something that I tend to think about a little bit when I'm adding a vignette. Okay, so I'm gonna go like something like that there. Feathering, I, I tend to go pretty high. I wanna do that. And then I just absolutely adore inner light. So I'm gonna put that at about a 22, 23. Um, and let me show you the before and after the vignette. There's the before and there's the after. Um, again, obviously the vignette helps to focus your, uh, your view or the viewer's eyes, I should say, on uh, the subject, which is really just straight down. Part of the subject to me is just the beautiful sky and water and the color. Um, but the, the actual subject, of course, is the building. So without the vignette, obviously you're going to see it. Um, I mean, it's, it's a prominent part of the photo, but I, I don't know. I like the vignette. You can tell when I turn it on and off, you can tell it's kind of that rectangular shape, right? You wouldn't notice it. You don't really notice it necessarily when it's on, except now that I mentioned it to you, you're probably like, well, I can totally see that. Um, and that's what I'm thinking to myself. Um, but when I turn it on and off, you can see how that shape and uh, has, has shown up in the vignette. And... You know, I, I you know, I, I like to do that where I have the shape of the vignette somewhat mirror the shape of the frame, right? So, so again, something I think about, but I think we're doing pretty good here. Uh, there's the before, there's the after. The only last thing I need to do, there's a spot here that I um, need to go take out with clone and stamp, but I'm not going to do that in this video. I've got a clone and stamp video there, and I did it in my uh, photo that I showed you at the beginning. Let me see if I still have that here. There it is. Uh, I mostly took it out. Actually, I need to probably fix a little bit of the color, but um, I just basically cloned and stamped some of this stuff over to there and um, kind of made it disappear, right? So when you zoom in, you can tell, just to be clear. I didn't do a great job. Uh, but when you're zoomed out, I think you can't quite tell, um, other than the fact that I just told you, now you're looking at it, and you're probably like, hey, I can see that. Um, but that's okay. Again, this is just an example of things I do and things I think about. This is kind of a golden hour kind of edit, um, accentuating those colors, the contrast, the vignette, and of course the golden hour and the, the vibrance, things like that, that really bring it to life. And that's how I did it. So there's the before 
and the after, and here it is with the slider before and after, much more vibrant, much more exciting, and uh, very much to my liking color-wise, but I like big colors, so that's what I do. That was it on this one, my friends. I do appreciate it, and please, if you haven't yet subscribed, uh, please do so. I appreciate that very much. Don't forget to like, share, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I'll see you really soon, back with more videos. So have a great day, wherever you are, or night, whatever it is, and thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care, my friends, and adios.